sermon of the day. Ms. Cheryl. Morning again. <laughs> okay. Push the wrong button. Morning again. Um, have any of you ever felt like you're just small and not important and you really can't have an effect on the world? Anybody feel like that sometimes? I thought so. <laughs> I was reading a verse this morning. It's in Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4, and it says, Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Right now we've got a lot of clouds in our world, don't we? We've got a lot of wind. A lot of windy people. <laughs> and I was thinking about this verse, been thinking about it, and then this morning something funny kind of happened. Um, Auntie dropped a dish and it broke. And I said, uh, I, I said, uh, okay, now I can't think of the words I exactly said. Oh, well, oops, there goes another, uh, my memory's bad, but I said, oops, there goes another, oops, there goes another, and I could not remember what it was. So I looked up the song, and most of you probably have heard this song before. It's called um, High Hopes. It's a dumb little song, but I like the words, and I thought you'd like it too. It says, next time you're found with your chin on the ground, there's a lot to be learned, so look around. Just what makes that little old ant think he can move that rubber tree plant? Anyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he's got high hopes, he's got high hopes, He's got high apple pie in the sky hopes. So anytime you're getting low, instead of letting go, just remember that ant. Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. When trouble calls and your back's to the wall, there's a lot to be learned. That wall could fall. Once there was a silly old ram, thought he'd punch a hole in a dam. No one could make that ram scram, but he kept that budding that dam because he had high hopes, he had high hopes, he had high apple pie in the sky hopes. So anytime you're feeling bad, instead of feeling sad, just remember that ram. And I'll stop there, but you get my point. We need to look, we need to, we need to keep going and keep butting our head against the wall if necessary, that wall might fall. And if we keep looking at this, as the proverb said, we can't just look at the clouds and the wind. We just have to keep doing what we know we should be doing. And I just thought um, in that silly old song, there was a good message. So let's pray. Oh, I forgot my verse. <laughs> Haven't done my verse. That's why I'm up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mark 1, 14, 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Father, I thank you for this morning and uh, again, and, and I just want to um, pray that we would not be looking at the bad things going on around us, but we'd be looking to you and, and realize that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I pray that we would share your word, that we would do what we're supposed to do and not give up, just keep doing it. And Father, I thank you that um, Pastor Al is, is here again with his sermon and he hasn't given up and he's got more words of wisdom for us, and I pray that you'd help him to say the words you want him to say, and I pray that our ears would hear those words and that we would hear what you want us to hear. I thank you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
I was just so excited about my song, I forgot. <laughs> Cheryl's little sermonettes are always good. But anyway. Well, I appreciate y'all being here this morning, and, and everything has just really fell into place. And that the, um, I thought she was going to say something along the lines. Of her, her commentary this week through Ecclesiastes have been very encouraging. If you read Ecclesiastes and you just read it word for word like a book, it's a very um, kick in the teeth kind of uh, as it starts out. And, and I, I believe that we have seen that we can't give up. If we're going to do the things that God has called us to do and to grow the kingdom, uh, that sovereign kingdom that we talked about last week, Amen. I believe that it's very important that we continue with that fervor that uh, I'm going to do it and not give up. Uh, there's been many times in ministry that I've wanted to throw the towel in and there's been many times that I all but give up and God would always show his mighty hand and show his strength. When I needed it most, I had fell down and then all of a sudden I would feel being left up, lifted up and God would be using a brother or sister to help lift me up and to encourage me. And that's what he's going to do here. And that's the reason why I said what I did about us having some fellowship. In our sermon, we're talking, our, our series is Christmas Gifts from God. And, and we've talked about uh, the things, and we've always knew that the, the, the idea of giving was at Christmas was that God gave his only begotten son, John 3.16. And that gift, but it, and then every year... I try to resonate that, that idea as I preach a message, but I believe this year God has given me uh, just kind of a, to think about those four living creatures that we saw around the throne there in the throne room in heaven that we as Christians will be able to see one day, and we talked about them being the attributes of Jesus, that one that came and was born and laid in a manger there in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago, but the second living creature that we saw was like a calf or an ox. Uh, this is a beast of burden, of the servant animal that's been domesticated. Uh, it was there to serve at the will of man. And we see that in the Gospel of Mark, the second book of the Gospels, and we see Jesus being presented as the servant. So I've titled my sermon today, The Gift of the Servant from Heaven. The Gift of the Servant from Heaven. And I capitalize that word T on, uh, or the in that phrase because it's not just any servant, but the servant. The one that we've been given to see that which we need to see and understand that we've been given an example as I was studying this week and trying to learn a little bit more, uh, I'm always reading and studying and trying to put these things together so that when I stand behind this holy desk, I don't just fill the air with words. I want you to learn as I have learned. The times that God spends with me, my job as a pastor is to share those things with you. I'm growing over there in my office and I'm having a time with God and we've uh, there's sometimes it's it's like Cheryl said. There's I, I stand up and I go to the door and I just boom 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 beat my head on the door because it's just not coming. Judy will say you need to finish your sermon today because we got this that and the other to do. And I say yeah I can just go turn that switch on and it comes on. And if you know anything about reading scripture and trying to draw out of it everything that you can, sometimes it's just tough. And it's a whole lot easier to read somebody's commentary or to listen. But here's what I've learned that helps me. As I read commentaries, I listen. Every day I read Cheryl's commentary because I know she's not just going to throw something out there. And I believe it's from the heart. So if God has shared something with her, I want to hear what that is. And I hope that as we preach these messages in this time or any time I get behind the desk, I'm telling you where I get my sermons and how I build them, is so that you can sit down this week and think about the things that I've shared with you because it's not something that I've read out of a book and written down. I may have gotten an idea and I've prayed about it and I search 
the scripture, I make sure that I understand based on God's word, what did God say about these things? Amen. So when we see these, and I, you know, that's, that's just a... Uh, homiletics one-on-one, and that is, homiletics is a fancy word for preaching. And I've had to learn to make sure that I'm not just telling what everybody else says, but what does God say? And as we look at this idea of the servant that God has given us, in Mark, um, this servant, we see more going on in the first chapter of Mark than any other chapter in the Bible except maybe Genesis 1. In the first chapter of Mark, we see a whole lot going on. And I want us to look at that. One of the things that I learned this week, and I had never uh, really looked at it in this way, but uh, there uh, are three beginnings in the Bible. Three beginnings in the Bible. The first one I want to bring to mind is John 1.1. We all know that, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This beginning is when we look out and we try as best we can to grab at the idea that God has always been and that God will always be. And His Word is always there. Amen? And He has given us that Word to learn that in the beginning, this, this has no connotation of, of time, okay? It means it's, it's, it's out there. And we will see another time on the other end of the thousand-year reign where that time will be dissolved and we just live for eternity. The second beginning that I see in the Scripture in Genesis 1-1, all of these are chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And one of the events that took place there in chapter 1 of Genesis is that very thing that there was a light and it was the day and there was darkness and that was night and that was the first day. We have now got time. We have time and we understand that we've moved from eternity into the, 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 the idea that we can place a time or a historical event that transpires and takes place. We now have a means of gauging the days of our lives. And I'm not talking about a soap opera neither. I mean, it might seem like a soap opera, but it's not. And the third one is what we find here in Mark 1.1. And if you'll follow along in, in the first chapter, yeah, my, my text is verses 14 and 15. But as we see the beginning here, it says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We can look back to an event that we're celebrating now in Christmas, and that event was the birth of Jesus Christ. God made flesh. He was given to us, and we're going to see this, as, but we need to understand that it was the beginning of the gospel. And we use that word frequently, um, but I want us to understand that Jesus is that gospel. Any other gospel is, is a story. Any other gospel is not part of the divine um, uh, presence of God in our lives. And if it, we've not heard the gospel, what the words of Jesus are, then we may have some mistakes that we're following. Okay? Okay? Now later we're going to see in John 1.14 that the flesh or the word became flesh. And we know that that is Jesus. So as we look here in Mark 1.1, let's focus on this word gospel and how Jesus is the gospel. We can go to another first chapter and first verse in 1 John. And it explains this. It says, that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes and which we've looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. 
Now, why would John write that our joy may be complete? And I believe that is a good challenging question. Anytime that you see that, you want to say, how does that impact me? And I believe that as we have seen the Word made flesh, and we've been studying the book of Revelation, and we know that Jesus loves us, right? We're the bride of Christ, those that have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. He loves us so much that He has not only shown us and given us the Word of God, but He's given us His Holy Spirit that we can sit here and read it and feel His heartbeat. And I want us to understand that if, if we're going to be complete, come on in, brother. If you want to be complete in what the Word of God says and what it has done in your life, First John here in this letter that he writes, he tells us what it is. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. You want to have joy this Christmas season? Give the gospel of Jesus Christ. You want your joy to be complete? Allow the story of Jesus' life, especially as a servant, to ring out this Christmas season. Amen? Let us see the servant that God has given us as a gift. You see, we have that and we understand that. And as we've seen that Jesus has been born and everything, his forerunner, John the Baptist, he preached repentance. Now, before Jesus came, it was all about the religious bunch and the law. And they, they listened to the law and they'd go to... They'd go to the temple. They'd give sacrifices. It was about man's fall and how they needed their sins covered by the blood. So they would go to the temple and have a high priest give an offering on their behalf. Now when Jesus came, he came to do something totally different. The religious stage is about to change because of the birth of Christ. And because Jesus was given to us by the Father, and we see this transpire in the book of Mark. In Mark 1 verse 8 it says, I have baptized you with water. This is John the Baptist. But he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. We've seen that John's preaching repentance. But Jesus is also going to preach it, but in a way that it changes us. We no longer have to go to the temple to have our sins forgiven. We can call upon the name of Jesus, that life-changing gift that God has given us. Amen. And through His blood, we have our sins atoned. And now the focus, now follow me here, and I've told you this before, too many Christians focus on the sins of life. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you don't need to focus on those sins anymore. Focus on what God's doing in the kingdom. Focus on what God's wanting to build the kingdom with sitting in this room. And you see, what we needed was a servant from heaven to, was, who was willing to serve and fulfill the will of God. And not only show us the will of God, but to show us how to do the same thing. He not only fulfilled the will of the Father, you see, we see that Jesus came to serve the will of the Father, in Mark 1, verses 9 and 11, you know, remember I said there's a lot going on in the first chapter of Mark. It said, in those days, and I underlined in my Bible, Jesus came. Jesus came. Anytime you go somewhere, it's for a reason, right? I hope you go somewhere. It's why you go for a reason. Jesus came here, and he says, from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he had come up out of the water immediately he saw the heavens open, being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Jesus didn't need to be baptized, did he? He didn't need to repent of sin. He, he was perfect in every way. And he didn't have to do that, but he knew that repentance was what was needed for the people to understand. So he gave us an example to show us what we needed to do, and that was to repent. Now, Jesus, like I said, didn't need to, but what the Father said was he has shown people what it is that they need to do, and I'm real pleased with that. Can the Father say that about you and me? 
You see, not only did Jesus come to serve the will of the Father, but he came to serve man. That's the reason why Jesus called himself the Son of Man. He was born flesh. God Almighty gave up his throne and came to this earth and became a little baby that was laid in a manger that people would try to kill for the purpose of being that sacrificial lamb that would atone for our sins, that we no longer have to focus on the bad, but that we've been given a gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ and a kingdom, that sovereign kingdom that we talked about last week. But Jesus had to be a servant to show us what it was that he was going to do. Jesus' ministry, you know, we know that it was to share the gospel of the Father, and we're going to get to that. But Jesus' purpose while he was serving, especially in that three years of ministry, a majority of it was healing. And why did we have sickness? Why did we have death? Why did we have all these things that he had to touch people with the sovereign hand of God and, and that he would change their life forever? It was because of healing. The sin that was going on in their lives is the reason we have the death and the degradation of man. The moment you are born, you start dying. Does that make sense to you? You are continually, that's the reason why, did you know that if your fingernails and your hair is because your blood cells are dying? Every day you die a little more. Some of y'all have gotten a lot, lot, lot farther than what a lot of people think we should. Amen. I'm starting to think I, 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 I'm, I've always said somebody shoot me if I turn 90. But after watching some of you ladies, I'm, I'm, I'm give it a shot. If John can do it, I can. Amen. But here's the thing: Jesus come to heal. He, he came to change the effects of sin. He come to change the focus from sin to a glorious heaven and a kingdom that we can be a part of. He not only served the Father, but he come to serve man. Mark 1.14, now after John was arrested, we see that word again, John or Jesus came. John the Baptist has been moved off the scene. He was the big person of the day that people were going to. The changes were happening. The Pharisees and the Sadducees the government, everybody hated John the Baptist. Well, John was moving off the scene. He was put into jail and later lost his head over it. Amen, y'all get that later. But anyway, he came and he went that way so that Jesus could come onto the scene. The ministry starts in this verse, verse 14. Isn't it amazing that John 1, 14, Jesus came, that his ministry would start and John uh, 1, 14 says that the flesh, or the word became flesh. The correlations in Scripture, there's a lot of times that you can land, go through the Gospels and find them lining up. But we see the ministry to the point that Jesus is now walking the face of the earth as a grown man, knowing the will of the Father. The Holy Spirit has come upon him, and he is now about the ministry of the Father, but to show us our path that we need to follow he needed us to understand that we have to be servants and not just servants of today but for eternity so in my message everybody got a handout I pray you do I want us to consider this real quick today and I hope that we can get through this and it makes sense and I pray that the Lord would encourage you as I've been encouraged and I'm looking forward to what he's going to do here in the next few weeks but consider, are you willing to follow the gospel known as Jesus and become a servant? Are you willing to follow the gospel of Jesus, known as Jesus, and become a servant? See, this season of giving that we have, what better gift could we share than the Christmas story? I was saved at Easter, another good time to get saved, amen? But the time of Christmas, the birth of Christ, that time that God sent us His servant to show us Point number one, he serves the Father. My text there in the text, it says proclaiming the gospel of God. It was God's gospel that he came to share. It was God that he was wanting to, as his son. He was always doing what the Father had sent him to do. He was always sharing the words that God had given him to share with those. And Jesus would herald the word of the Father 
through his ministry. In Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, the joints of the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. You remember I said that Jesus came to show us the difference from our sin, the bad, and help us to focus on the good. But a better way to say it is that he took us from the darkness of this word, world, the void, and brought us into the kingdom of light. And I believe that as he showed us that he, that word that herald from the Father, that Jesus showed us exactly what it was that we needed to hear through his word, and we need to hear it today. Jesus was sent from heaven by the Father. Amen? He said, Son, I need you to go. Romans 10, 15, it says, And how are they... Uh, how are they to preach unless they have been sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news or the gospel. Now we've heard that and I'm not going to take my shoes off and show you how pretty my feet are. God's word says it, amen. I preach the gospel. But instead of thinking about my feet or anybody that shares the gospel's feet, think about but that first one that was sent. And think about Jesus' feet as it's nailed to the cross, as the blood drips off his toes. One of the key scenes in the, 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 the movie we see, it, uh, the, the, I can't even think of the name of it, Passion of the Christ that Mel Gibson did. One of the key scenes in that movie that I have never forgotten is the picture of Mary kissing Jesus' feet as he's nailed to the cross. And when she comes back, her face is covered with the blood. And I want us to understand that as we listen to the word, God sent Jesus to give us the word. God sent his son to serve the father, but to share with us what it is that we need to do. Jesus was bold in his message about the father. He didn't hold back. And that's the reason why people wanted to kill him. Amen? They said that blasphemy. They called it blasphemy, but he always called out the father and he says, I'm, I'm here to be your, your servant. In Romans 1.16, Paul wrote, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Are you willing to be a servant and be willing to proclaim or share the gospel that was sent from God? Jesus wants us to do that. That's the reason why he showed us how to serve the Father. Secondly, he serves the time. He serves the time. The passage there in our text says, saying the time is fulfilled. All through history we see the story. Last week we talked about the kings and how they were watching for the star and they knew that the time of the king, the Messiah was upon them and the time was here. And all these things that were told in the, New, the Old Testament in Isaiah 7, 14, we see that God was, you know, with us now. And we talked about the song Emmanuel, O come, O Emmanuel. In Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. The time had come that Jesus, our God, was not going to meet with us in a temple. God was not going to meet with us wherever it was. You know, he met with Moses on Mount Sinai and all these places we see that God met. But God wanted to meet and fulfill the time in which he would live and reign in his church. Amen. He lives within us. Because Jesus was born, God is with us. We see Emmanuel. And we can hope that that is why we can serve because of the time that we find ourselves. Jesus was here to fulfill the law. The Old Testament was written and Jesus himself said, Do, not, do you not think that I come to abolish the law of the prophets? I have come to abolish them, not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For since the Garden of Eden, God has said, I'm going to show you how to get away from the dark and into the light. My, my, and, and he said the seed, Jesus, that would crush the head of Satan. Amen. Amen. And the darkness that the world had seen and because of man, this law that was given, Galatians 4.4 4 says, but then the fullness of time had come. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. 
And when we think of the law and we think about the, you know, everything was surrounded and the most key event was that sacrifice, was it not, Cheryl? The sacrifice was most holy that we had to go in and atone our sins that we could have a relationship with God. You see, God hates sin. And that's the very reason that Jesus was nailed to a cross. But before he went to the cross, he showed us that we're to serve the Father. And it's because of the time that we find ourselves. Now, Jesus did fulfill the Old Testament prophecy. In John 1, 14, we see that. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory is only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The very truth that we've learned all of the Old Testament, that our sins have to be atoned. Amen? There was going to be a time in which God would send a seed. They've always talked about it, being from the, the root of David and, and that he would be from the, uh, the, the city, he would be born in Bethlehem. All these truths from the prophecy transpired that night that he was born. Amen? The time was at hand and it was time for Jesus to be born to fulfill. Now see, Jesus showed us all this as a servant to show us how we should be. When he returns, he will fulfill the New Testament. Amen? Aren't you ready for that? I know I am. I'm ready and I'm looking forward to it. And I can't wait to get back into Revelation because I'm having fun knowing that it's not about the wrath of God but the love of God. That he would send his son to make a way for me to go to heaven and to serve him as he served us. Amen. Are you willing to fulfill the time today to be a good servant? Point number three, he serves the kingdom. He serves the kingdom. In our text it says the kingdom of God is at hand. Now last week we talked about the sovereign kingdom. And we've talked this week in our word with Pastor Al about our value. And it kind of goes with what Cheryl was saying today. Our value has been upped a great deal because of what Jesus showed us as a servant. Our service to the Lord gives us value that we are loved and cherished by God Almighty. You want to make God smile, do something that he's told you to do. Be a servant. Amen. Amen. Follow the lead of Jesus to follow what the Father says, but also your fellow man to show them the way of Jesus. Be a servant in all that we do, that we are part of a kingdom. It's at hand. You see, Jesus moved that focus away from the world. I said earlier that we, he took the focus from sin onto the kingdom of God. Let's take it a step farther. If we're truly serving the, the, the living Son of God, amen, if we're truly doing that, then our focus is not on this world. It's on heaven. And I believe if we can get to a place that we do that, that we take our eyes off of this world and all that it has, and I, I haven't seen a whole lot here of late that makes me want to stay here. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. John 18, 36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. I want to be where Jesus is, don't you? In my, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. Amen? But I might, that I might be delivered over to that. I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. I believe we need to be fighting today for the kingdom that's to come. Amen. The kingdom not only is to come, but we're going to see that it is here today. And we said that last week. You see, Jesus not only took the focus off the world and onto the kingdom of God, but he brought the kingdom of God here to planet earth. We, we were only told about heaven. I believe the original intent was that we live here on earth. That's where human beings would stay. If, if Satan hadn't have intervened, we would multiply it and we would have taken care of the earth and this would have been our home, which would have been a good deal without sin. But Jesus, because of what he did for us to show us a servant, he, he made us part of the kingdom, not part of creation. And I believe that's a, something that we need to think about, that he did that for us. It was a gift. In Luke 17, starting with verse 20, it says, Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would be, he answered, 
the kingdom of God is not going with signs to be observed, nor will he say, look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Because of Jesus and him being born on Christmas morning, and he was given to us as a servant, he showed us the way to be part or be citizens of the kingdom of God. And that is allowing Jesus to be part of you. Amen. We accept him as our Savior. He indwells us. And we become part of the kingdom. He delivered us to that kingdom of light. Colossians 1.13 He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. Amen. And transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. That should make you excited. That should give you the reason to go head butt the wall if you have to to do whatever it takes to share the gospel, to be a servant of the kingdom of God that he has made you a part of. And number four, he serves the gospel. Now we started out, he served the, he served the Father and it said that he, 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 he preached the gospel of God. But it says that Jesus himself, he started saying, repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Remember in the introduction I said that Jesus was the gospel. Have you sat down and thought about what Jesus means to you? Now I'm not just talking about a Bible story. I'm not talking about the crosses that we see all around the place. I'm not talking about this time of Christmas we, we celebrate the birth of Christ. But what is that which God gave you through His Son, Jesus Christ, the gospel. Well, it might be that I don't have to go to hell. That's a good thing. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. And that should move us to share with our friends and loved ones that we don't want to see live eternity in hell. But I believe that because of the gospel, if we repent and believe in the gospel, then we will have a smile on our face and think about the face of Jesus. I said a while ago I wanted you to think about his feet nailed to a cross and because of that blood our sins have been atoned. And because of that forgiveness that God gave us through his only begotten son that we can, if we believe, repent and believe in the gospel, that now we can transfer our focus from his feet, that sacrifice that was given to give us a key a way, a bridge, whatever you want to say, to open the door of heaven, that one day we will see Jesus face to face. I don't believe there's a more beautiful face in all of creation. I believe when we see him, it's going to just be in awe. But you see, we have to get to that place that we, we repent that it's not about us. It's not about this world. It's not about our desires but it's about what Jesus did as a servant to show us how to serve and to live. See, Jesus died, was buried, arose. He ascended to heaven to prepare a place for us, and he's coming back. We need to repent and believe. Acts 17.30 says, The times of ignorance God overlooked. You didn't know Jesus? He overlooked those things. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because of that gift of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, we no longer have a chance to ask somebody to give a sacrifice on our behalf. We have to repent and we have to believe. See, Jesus wants you to share the gospel that way he, the way he became a servant. You believe that Jesus died for your sins? then Jesus expects us to tell others how he was a servant, how he was the gospel. He expects us to follow his lead. When we read in John chapter 13, we read the story where Jesus put a towel around his waist and he washed his apostles' feet. Now to some people that doesn't, that just sounds like he did a nice thing. But that job was the lowest job in the household. You had to sit there and, and wash everybody that come in the house's feet. Back then they had sandals so they would clean and it was very dirty and it was degrading that job. But Jesus did that. But when that was all said and done, he made this statement. He says, 
Now I've shown you how to be a servant. Go and be, do likewise. You see, our job is not just to accept that free gift of salvation. Now that's free. But once we do that and we have become a citizen of heaven, it's our place to share that beautiful gift of being a servant for God and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our loved ones. And for that matter, a stranger on the street. Philemon is a story about a runaway slave. And Paul wrote this in the first chapter, verse 6, and it says, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. Our salvation is something to share. Andy tells it all the time, and he hands out tracts that, that has his story, how he accepted Jesus. Have you shared that? You know, I can tell anybody about the Bible, but what people want to hear is, how does the Bible affect you? Are you a servant to the one that you love? Are you a servant to the word in which you believe? Are you a servant to the point that you're going to suffer for the cause of Christ to get as many people to the throne of grace as we possibly can? Jesus gave us the best example of all. He came and became a servant. He tried to correct the things that were wrong. He not only tried, he did. And if we have him in us, we can do the same. We can have an impact on our community, on our lives, and all those around us if we put that towel and we become a servant of God. Jesus has changed us to continue to serve. In Luke 24, verse 47, And that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in His name to all nations. It kind of sounds like the Great Commission, doesn't it? Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. I served the Father and I've served man. That authority has been given to me. Now what I need you to do is go out and make disciples. I need you to go out, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them that which I've commanded you. And go back to the upper room. I've shown you how to be a servant. Go and do likewise. See, our challenge this Christmas is to give that gift that was given to us, to share the gospel, to be a servant, to open your mouth, to show with your actions that which nobody could ever touch. And that is the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Seeing is believing. People see your life. Are you grumbly all the time? Are you mad all the time? I believe sometimes if we would just be happy and just share the gospel when people don't expect it. I, you know, I, I, I think of people, um, Raquel, terrible, terrible thing that happened to her son. But she's not give up faith. She's here today. And she knows that her church family's been praying for her. And I think God's going to use this to help her. Not only that, but to help her community because she's not turned her back on God. Amen. We can have that same impact. Are you willing to serve and share and tell others that they need to repent and believe in the gospel? So I ask you early in the day in my, in my introduction, and I ask us to consider, are you willing to follow the gospel known as Jesus and become a servant? And my conclusion is, let us be a servant of Jesus and share his gospel. Anything that Jesus did, we can do. Amen? Amen. Now people say, well, he, he did things that I could never do. Have you tried? The biggest thing that Jesus did in his ministry was heal people. And if you share the gospel in a way that you show that you're a servant of the kingdom of God, our King Jesus Christ, and you do it the way he showed us to do it, you can heal somebody of their sins. Jesus does the work, but you introduce them to Jesus and he takes care of it. We can make a difference in people's lives. We can help people part Red Seas. 
Amen. Those troubles of life, if we stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ, be a servant to help those around, we can see Red Sea's part. And we can see great gifts from God. Lives changed. Wouldn't it be a great thing to get to heaven and those people that you had an impact on, as they gather around and say, praise the Lord, it's because of you that I'm here. You were a servant doing the things that God had commanded you to do. That's what being a servant is, is doing what you're told. Amen. I pray that you're willing to do that. That's the best gift we could give this Christmas or on into 2021. Let us understand the servant of heaven and let's live like him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings and your love that you came to earth to serve the Father. But yet, Jesus, you came and showed us how we should live. You give us examples. You give us your word. You give us your Holy Spirit. Let us be strong and courageous in this time that we find ourselves. And let us talk about the kingdom that we're a part of. But Lord, let us be a servant. Let us share the gospel that is Jesus. And it's in his precious name we pray. Amen.